Good afternoon and good evening and thanks for stopping by. Our dedicated team will guide you through with the latest updates and theories at Starbase Texas. the channel be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon for future streams hello everybody welcome to the starbase weekly live stream my name is zach golden and i am happy to be here with you guys today um, as always we have an awesome show for you guys uh, and I have some great co-hosts with me today, so I'll go ahead and introduce all of them. Uh, first of all, we have Ryan from Ryan Hanson Space. Uh, Ryan, thanks for joining us. Yeah, it's good to be back. It's been a couple of weeks since I've been here, so I'm excited to see uh, all the changes here. Yeah, me too. Me too. We got a lot to talk about for sure. Um, we also have Stephanie with us. Stephanie is coming to us from uh, all the way from Australia, so thanks for being here with us. I think it's about, what, 4 a.m. there? Yep, good day from Australia. Yes, yeah, where I am, I've had some sleep, and yeah, it's good to be on a stream with Zach. I, Zach asked me to be on a stream quite a long time ago, when uh, chopsticks were first getting installed. So here we are. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, it's been uh, quite a while, and thanks for being here. I know you also helped out with hosting on the uh, weeks that I haven't been available, so appreciate that. And thank you. Um, we also have Astro Joe here, who will be helping us out with questions and donations. So Astro Joe, how's it going? Excellent. Thank you. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Thanks for joining us, all you Starbase fans around the world. Let's enjoy the show. Awesome. And of course, we have uh, Indian Star in the background. She's helping us out with all the production stuff. Uh, Indy, how, how's your weekend going? It's going well, thank you. I'm glad to have you back. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And of course, we uh, did miss a show last weekend. Um, we, uh, Mauricio, or actually, sorry, uh, not Mauricio, but his sister, um, and uh, Irma, she uh, did the flyover pictures last week. We were not able to do them until, I believe it was Sunday. So ended up not doing the show last week um, and essentially saved them for this week. And uh, with that said, the images that we will be going through this week are from last Sunday. But, um, you know, we still have a lot of changes to cover. And I think, you know, they are still, most of these pictures are still relevant because there's a ton of new stuff going on at Starbase. So... Um, you know, with that said, uh, thank you all for being here and let's go ahead and hop into the show. And as always, we are going to start off at Massey's, um, where there is tons of new stuff happening over here. So I don't know, Ryan, do you want to take us away here? 
sure. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's getting quite crowded here at uh, at Massey's. Um, and it's uh, every time I look at Massey's, I, I kind of uh, get a little bit of a nostalgic feeling of looking at uh, what the the launch complex looked like, you know, a couple of years ago when there was still you know some some test stands surrounded by some patches of concrete and dirt. So it's uh, it's interesting to see this site build up similar to, uh, to how the launch site has. Yeah, I would have to agree. And um, right now, I would say most of the changes that we're kind of looking out for are at Massey's, at least what I'm looking out for, um, specifically when it comes to some of the uh, future test stands that we're uh, kind of been hoping will end up here, possibly. But uh, we will probably get into that a little bit more once we get to the Sanchez site. Um, But yeah, so we have uh, a lot of action going on out here. This seems to be more busy than the actual launch site up until this week, actually, now that we've had a static fire of Ship 26 yesterday. Um, so up until that point, I would say Massey's was probably more busy than the launch site has been, at least for the last few months. So lots of testing of boosters and ships, uh, lots of movements of boosters and ships back and forth between um, the build site and Sanchez and here. So this week we have Booster 11 out here. And uh, I think Booster 11 did a cryo test um, two days ago, I want to say, or was it yesterday? I think it was two days ago. We've um, done two days of testing on it now. I think they did a cryo test and then they were doing some additional testing on a, another day this week. Yeah, and, and when they do it out here, they seem to be testing one tank at a time. So um, two days ago, they did the LOX tank. Did they do the, the methane tank um, before? I probably missed that one. Yeah, they'd fill a methane tank and put a little bit in the LOX tank and then vice versa. Okay. Yeah, so that's pretty interesting. I mean, we got the um, actual structural test stand out here, so every time they're, they are testing the boosters here, we can maybe assume that they're also testing the actual um, the thrust puck, essentially. So um, this is both cryo testing and structural testing, but it's kind of tough to tell what they're doing at certain times and you know, not guaranteed that they're doing structural testing each time because, you know, you could just do regular cryo testing on top of this as well. But, um, yeah, definitely good to see some progress out here as far as vehicle testing while we're still waiting for the next launch. Um, and they're definitely not uh, not wasting any time getting the future vehicles ready for the next steps. So, um, speaking of next, next steps, we do have the, um, okay, I think this is Test Tank 14. Did I get Correct. that one right? Yeah, They're Test Tank 14. Point. Yeah, so this one this one was moved uh, to the Massey site a few weeks ago, and right now it's currently been set up in the area. Um, I forget what we call this area, but essentially this is like the uh, containment basin, I want to say, for when they do um, test a failure. So, I mean, I guess we are expecting that to happen sometime soon with this tank. Um have they done a regular one test moved. on this yet? Uh, they did do a test here this past week. Um, I think it was kind of expected that it was going to uh, burst since it was on the burst pad, but um, it has not been burst as of uh, this morning, <laughs> I believe. So. It, has its, it has its straps over the top of it too for the yep. burst test, but it hasn't done a burst test yet. yet. Yeah, I guess they must have added those straps after this image was taken. Um, but what we can see is that, uh, you know, sometimes they do those tests of failure with water and other times they do it with liquid nitrogen. And this one seems to be set up for a uh, the, um, nitrogen test by the looks of it, since it's uh, tied into the cryotubing over here at the tank farm. So, yeah, that'll be interesting. And we uh, don't know 100% what they're testing here, but we do know that there is a... the I want to say newer E dome. I say that with air quotes because it's been a while, been around for a while, but only been used on the common dome of the boosters up, up to this point. So this one has a um, the flatter E dome on the top and also on the bottom. So something new that they're testing here, but we haven't really seen exactly what it's going to be applied to. Um, but I'm guessing after this test, we may see it show up somewhere. Um, either on the booster or the ship. I, I don't really know if you could put another one on the booster because, I mean, 
the forward dome seems to be well, I guess you could probably do it on the forward dome, but the way that they have this designed with all the hardware that goes on top, it may um, remove some of the space that they have to actually mount all of that stuff. So I'm guessing this probably has more to do with the actual ship um, instead of the booster. What do you guys think? They could probably fit it um, on the forward of the booster. They'd have to obviously move some components around. They're kind of um, involving the slope of the dome to kind of create that that ring pedestal that the uh, the grid fin motors kind of mount to. Um, they could kind of reconfigure that that hardware. They'd probably have to drop the dome down, make that pedestal a little bit bigger. Um, they could probably do it on the on the forward. Um, we we know they're doing it on the common. Um, the aft is probably not um, a place that they would ever put an, an E dome yeah, just because right. of the way that the thrust puck works. But, um, but yeah, they could potentially do it on both the the ship and the booster for the forward. Yeah, you know, I I've had an idea with this um, just because of the fact that it's on the top and bottom. You know, I, we haven't really found out how they're going to do the tanker version of the starship yet, so it could theoretically be done with stretched tanks so you just stretch the methane tank and the liquid oxygen tank and you use whatever's left over in those tanks as uh, what you're going to be transferring but it's also possible that there could be a tank in the payload section and so i think it is possible that this could be a test of like the future payload section of the tanker version of the starship um, to me, that kind of makes the most sense right now. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's kind of my thoughts on that one, but I think we're going to have to wait a little bit longer to see how what they end up doing. It's going to be tough, though, unless they happen to leave their ring sections out in the actual uh, ring yard, then we're not really going to be able to see where it gets incorporated because, you know, we do run the risk with the way that the Star Factory is um, being constructed that they could just take ring sections straight out of there and, and, and bring them to the uh, high bay, like, you know, uh, without ever leaving it outside for us to be able to get to see it from above. So hopefully that doesn't happen. <laughs> uh, but I guess so moving on, what else do we have out here? I guess I'll just stay up in this area because uh, there, there is something interesting that was pointed out to me earlier in the show. Uh, Stephanie, do you want to mention that again? with the booster forward section? Um, yeah, the jacks and the ring watches um, showed me that on top of the booster there, there's four new thrusters, Eulage thrusters. Yeah, that one and then the four. So there was originally the two and they've added those four and they'll be for, um, for thrusters. And it's got a good moment of um, leverage all the way up there on top of the booster there. Yeah, it looks like they've added uh, ports right here for... I can't tell if there's actual valves here or not. It's really tough to see. I mean, the booster is no. pretty tall. So. Yeah, the valves are closer in toward the, the dome, I believe. I think you can kind of see where the diameter of that pipe changes. Um, and that's where the actual valve is placed. It's really tough. There's kind of a, a little bit of a glimmer on the one on the bottom there. I, I believe that's the valve. Like right here? Yeah, right in that area. Okay. I believe there are some other photos that showed a little more clear, but yeah, I believe the valves are, are up there. Yeah, it's yeah, interesting yeah. that they move these up here. Do, do they, they already have vents on the methane tank up top, right? So do, I don't know yeah, if they... Yeah, actually, just below them. Um, if you go back to that other ground image you had up before, um, we can actually see um, the original vents are down a little bit lower. Um, and I guess one of my theories regarding why they might be adding these additional vents here is because um, when you think about filling up the, the methane tank with the, the liquid propellant, um, that fluid level is going to end somewhere. Um, and they're likely not ending the fluid level below these vents. They're going to be filling up into the actual dome. So there's going to be a, a smaller air pocket at the top. Um, and it, it's possible that having the, um, the valves and the vents down as low as they were, they're you know, maybe running into some issues with freezing, um, the fact they were under the actual um, propellant level. Um, who knows, maybe the, with the first wet dress rehearsal we saw, there was a, a lot of vapor that, you know, maybe could have been a valve freezing, not sure. But at least having them up here at the top, feeding from the top of the dome, they actually are more likely to get actual gas coming out. 
uh, versus maybe leaking the the actual propellant. So um, they've potentially just you know negated the reason for having these these lower vents. Um, they may go away on future boosters. Not quite sure. Um, but uh, yeah, they have those new uh, vents up top, which essentially replace the uh, the same functionality. Yeah, I guess I would expect them to close these up, but I don't think they have. This one uh, appears to have been had like some sort of cap on it, but there's still a hole in the bottom of it. I'm not sure if that's actually still an active vent or not, though. I'm yeah, not exactly look. sure what they've done. It it almost seems like they've um, placed plates with varying sized orifices on them so that if they need to detank much quicker, they might open the valve on the on the left. And if they need just a little bit of a you know a pressurization adjustment, maybe they open the one on the right. Um, that way they can maybe fine tune um, the the pressures in the tank a little bit easier. Um, not really sure how that applies to I guess RCS and you know directional. It, there's probably a lot more logic involved with that, but um, I, I think that might be the the idea behind the different sized holes um, covering those valves. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. So these could potentially assist with the actual flip maneuver after stage separation though, right? It's possible. Yeah, I do wonder if it's all just related to um you know mitigating pressure or if it's or if it does have something to do with that actual um uh you know venting or sorry for RCS essentially reaction control at, uh, from the top, you know, as Stephanie was saying it you do have more of a lever arm if you do it from a few meters higher. So it could theoretically uh, be, be something related to that. But yeah, I think in my opinion, just looking at the way it's designed, it kind of seems like it's more, oops, wrong image there, uh, more just related to getting it closer to the top of the tank as far as um, keeping it so that you're pulling out gas instead of liquid, like you were saying. And given that there's four control valves there, it does suggest some kind of uh, flight control. Yeah, good point. Good point. I think the flip after uh, um, separation will be primarily induced with the, the three engines still running um, on the booster. I think we'll just kind of gimbal those all the way and, and flip that way. But I, having these, um, these vents here at the top um, definitely provides them with the, the RCS that um, you know, would need adjustment when the engines aren't running. So um, definitely uh, there to be helpful, but I'm not sure if they necessarily will apply to uh, the flip after separation. I guess right. that helped with landing too, because um, while gimbling's very good, these thrusters up the top would be a lot uh, quicker reacting than trying to gimbal the engines when it's hovering for landing. And I guess that's just a thought, by the way. I don't know for sure. I do wonder how much... Uh, force you're able to actually generate out of these when you're landing. Obviously, up until the point of landing, you're using the, the grid fins, but for those final adjustments, I don't know if they would actually be able to do much as far as, you know, moving the top of the booster in one way or another while they're landing. But that would be interesting to see, actually. True. All right, so moving on, we do have, a, you know, one thing I've been kind of keeping eyes on just to see if there's going to be any preparations for additional test stands in this area um, that, you know, they have for the most part completely cleared it out. There's not really too much left up here. Uh, kind of just waiting on them to actually start removing the rest of this concrete and potentially start preparing the ground for additional test stands. And um, as of right now, we haven't really seen much, but they do have some electrical work going on near this area. And there's, as of right now, nothing over here. So this does indicate that there will be something here over in this area in the future. So something to be on the lookout for. Uh, so what else do we have here? They have finally started um, to put up the structural steel. I guess they kind of started this a few weeks ago, but you know, moving really slow on getting this set up and do have some pretty uh, heavy structural steel members going up vertically, at least around the, the sides. So this is going to be really interesting. Really still have no ideas what this is going to be. 
used for it. I don't know if you guys have heard anything about this over the last few weeks. Only that there was something in the plans that it was to have some upper space on top. And the, yeah, those beams are quite um, sturdy. So it almost looks like it's going to have something heavy on top. But um, who knows? And the plumbing down in this front corner, left hand corner, suggests some kind of amenity, amenities. And there is some kind of sewage system down near the gate with some um, some outflow into some, um, what are they call it, seepage trenches. Oh, you mean down in, that was down in this area? Uh, yeah, that's correct, yes. Right, yeah. And I've said this <laughs> so many times before, I feel like, but I guess we're going to have to wait and see on this one. There still is a bunch of steel down here, so we can tell that it's going to get, um, well, uh, at least another level taller, if not two. So it's going to be interesting to see what this actually turns out as. Maybe a, maybe a control center, but maybe not. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting to note, even with the, the heavy steel, I'm not exactly seeing any evidence of like a, a door per se. So I'm not sure if it would necessarily be used for, um, you know, driving stuff in and, you know, lifting it, you know, say in the in the case of having some sort of a bridge crane or anything. Um, so I'm not thinking this would necessarily be related to, to lifting anything heavy. Um, it might just be a uh, a taller structure. Yeah, that's a, definitely a mystery still, I would say. So moving on, we also have a few changes that have happened out here. So the hot stage test article was moved back to the build site this week. I'm assuming that it's most likely being scrapped at this point. Um, can't really think of any other tests that they would need to do with that, um, unless they're altering it or something like that. But uh, as far as we know, maybe being scrapped at this point. But uh, these two test articles, we also haven't really... Well, it's tough to tell if they've done anything with this one in particular. Um, this is the uh, aft section for sh oof, Ship 27. Yeah. Yeah, so this, one, this is the one that was left over after Ship 27, and they made alterations to the um, engine shielding, essentially. So uh, they upgraded the... Well, first of all, this doesn't have any actual engines in it, but they did upgrade the shielding on the bottom of it um, to kind of match what they have on ship 25 right now. Um, and so we're expecting that they're doing some kind of structural testing on this, but without using any cryofluids or anything like that, it's really tough to tell when this is actually being tested. So until we see it removed, it's going to be hard to know whether or not they've actually finished what they're doing here. We had a big discussion, I think, a week or two ago um, with all the, you can see all the hydraulic actuators ready for the, um, for the test article next to it to do some twisting and some pulling. Yeah, I was kind of expecting that they would do this first, but um, this doesn't really apply to the next launch. So this would be ship 28 and after that this affects uh, with the actual payload section. So um, I think this kind of took priority on that, but yeah, I mean, it seems like it's been, as you mentioned, configured for this test as well, too. But, um, yeah, I guess we're going to have to keep our eyes on that one as well and probably wait for some movement on this before we can actually tell whether or not it's been completed. But this one definitely does have implications for the next launch, given that it's testing the, the new shielding. Yeah, that's true. Uh, what else? Do you all have anything else you wanted to mention about Massey's? Um, not much changed at Massey's the shed. They've still continuing a little bit of that road work, and there's that great big cleared area at the very top near the water treatment plant. They pulled down the fence at the water treatment plant and opened all that area right up. We're not sure why yet. Yeah, I have wondered if they're going to remove this, but it doesn't seem like that currently. I think they're uh, possibly going to expand it or something like that, but you never know. And just to the left there, they're adding, I think they're adding more dirt there to that road at the rear, right up the rear there. I'm at this ramp that goes around. Yeah, whether that's going to be a road or it's just a, another berm to stop um, cryofluids going down into the rear ground there from the burst pad. But yeah, it does they've kind of never really done anything with the back corner yet, but um, kind of hoping that they do develop that back corner at some point. 
the shift of uh, a lot of the the tents and storage from the kind of the top right to kind of the lower right um, is really a a big indication that they plan to do something in that that top right hand corner. Um, we're kind of seeing the beginnings of of that kind of take development. So it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for uh, kind of that that top half of Massey's. I agree with that 100%. I'm really excited to hopefully that they put another test stand back here, but we'll have to keep our eyes out on that. And I think we're, we're actually can talk about that a little bit more once we move over to the Sanchez site, but want to make sure that we don't have any questions from the Massey's location before we move over there. Uh, Astro Joe, did we have any? Okay. Siri is listening to me. Sorry if you guys heard that. Um, <laughs> uh, no questions. I've been watching chat. Um, we just got the question bot uh, fixed, but I um, want to thank Jim Cabot for gifting a membership prior to the stream starting as usual, as well as as the stream started. Sputnik Gazer became a RGV flight supporter. Ronald Hines donated a $2 super chat, says hi, RGV. Roland, Roland, right, sorry about that. Steve Coates, $1.99, couple of bucks for the cause, choo-choo. And Jim Cabot, $5 Super Chat. I'm with you, Steve Coates. Thanks, RGB and friends. That's all I got right now. Awesome. Well, thank you all for the donations. Really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I guess with that, we will go ahead and move over to the Sanchez site. So uh, some of these images were a little bit tough to see. Some close details. I really like the way the lighting is on this, but it was kind of early in the morning. I think the flyover was at like 9 a.m. ish. Um, so some of the, uh, pictures a little bit difficult to see. So I'm going to move ahead to some of the ones that were a little later in the day. Uh, well by later, probably like a half hour or so. But so the first thing we have is a lot more progress on the ground fabrication building. Um, they've gotten a lot of the paneling up on the, the sides and the, at least the roof on this, uh, lean to on the side. Um, uh, but they're, not really in a huge rush to get this building done. I think we have some ground images of it as well, too, but not uh, overly important, so I, don't, I won't spend too much time on that. But we do have some progress going on. Actually, hold on, before I mention that. Um, so we do see, we have seen this trench that's being dug um, up on the top over here that's coming down towards that building. And so, you know, I've gone back through some of the previous images, and I did initially think that there was some conduit lines going down here towards this building, but I'm actually not 100% sure if they actually run to this building, so they may just be preparing to run the actual main lines down to this building up here, or they could be preparing for something else back in this area, but uh, just an interesting thing to point out back there as it relates to the ground fabrication building. But moving on, let's talk about these test stands, or, um, well possible test stands. <laughs> so, uh, Ryan, I guess, do you want to lead this one off? Sure. So um, I guess looking at these photos here earlier this week, the first thing I noticed is that um, it appears we have some um, brightly uh, colored items on top of each of the, because um, I call it kind of call them the, uh, the, the pedestals for the um, holding the booster. So these uh, these bright colored components um, appear to be um, clamps similar to the ones that we would see on the, the orbital launch mount. Um, and they actually all seem to have a, uh, a part in the middle, which we know the orbital launch mount has a piston um, located there in, in the center that kind of actuates um, the clamp itself. So um, presumably the they're trying to mimic the the orbital launch mount um, with this setup that they have. The the main difference here is that instead of the the clamp being fixed to kind of a rotating arm that can fold back into the test stand, um, these are fixed to kind of the, these pedestals that are able to um, slide in and out. So um, obviously, with a you know a launch mount, you need the, the clamps to fold out of the way so they don't hit the uh, the bottom of the booster. Um, you know, this stand is obviously for a different scenario where they don't need to quickly retract um, the, those pedestals or those clamps. So um, I think that's probably the the biggest um, obvious change here. Um, one thing that that is interesting is, you know, as soon as I started seeing these these clamps here, um, to me that kind of indicated that uh, 
you know, they, they may be preparing to do some sort of uh, more intricate testing, um, possibly engine testing uh, with, a, with a setup like this. Um, given how beefy this this is, it doesn't really fit the book for a uh, typical like booster transport stand. It seems like it's a little bit beefier. It's made for something a little bit more. Um, so I started looking for um, evidence that it could actually be a uh, a test stand potentially for engine testing. And um, the next obvious thing um, related to engine testing would be as if the um, QDs for the outer 20 Raptor engines were present. Um, they aren't yet, but there is some indications that they actually have cut um, some holes between each of these um, sliding pedestals where a QD system could actually be located. Uh, it's hard to tell on these images. I took some and I brightened them up, increased the contrast, and, and played with them. And there are actually a couple of shapes between um, each of these clamps that appear to match the cutouts that they cut into uh, the orbital launch mount. Um, so there's some evidence that they might actually um, add some Raptor QDs to uh, to this stand and possibly the other one. Yeah, here's an image that, that I, uh, I sent Zach uh, after kind of brightening stuff up. And um, the the shapes, they, they match the, the orbital launch mount pretty, pretty close. Um, now, in the case of this stand, they wouldn't actually need the hoods that come down and close over the holes where the Raptor QDs come out. Um, they would probably just have the the Raptor QD, um, you know, poking out. So, um, you know, with no lift off intended from these these stands, they would need to protect the that system as as much as they need to on the the orbital launch mount. So, yeah, interesting note here. We'll have to to wait for some uh, some future flyovers, but different lighting conditions, and see if uh, we can see more detail. Um, might even catch a glimpse of a of a QD poking out, which would be a pretty big development. Yeah, I've been excited about this for a while because I've been uh, speculating since these really showed up that this might actually be for engine testing on the boosters. And so, you know, given that there's two of them, and I mean, the, the, the thing that's kind of thrown me off over time is the fact that they have parts for another one, but they haven't started actually constructing that third one yet. Um, so having three of them uh, is a little bit confusing, but... You know, I do think there's a possibility. What was that? I think those parts over on the right are just the pedestals for the one here on the right. I don't think those are, I guess, uh, separate parts for a third one quite yet. I think those are just the, the pedestals, aren't they? Or maybe I'm not seeing that correctly. Uh, possibly. Uh, right. so when we they're were looking the at them, what was that? Uh, they're the slides for the second t uh, test stand. Um, oh. Yeah, you, that, um, those stands are a mystery. They're a bit overbuilt for being anything to do with construction, so I doubt they'll go into any of the wide bays. But um, they could be a transport stand, but I like what Ryan's saying about the QDs. That does point towards static firing. Now, the obvious you know, thing to mention is that uh, we have no idea where these would, would go. Um, they do kind of mirror the, the philosophy with the ships because they have two... Um, test stands for the ships at the launch site, even though they're not really using both right now. Um, they do have two for the ships, and then potentially these could be two for the boosters. Um, no idea where they would actually go, but um, the evidence is kind of pointing towards them being used for engine testing right now. Um, it's just a matter of where would that actually occur. Um, so Yeah. You know, I, I was expecting them to go to the suborbital tank farm, but as y'all can see in this image, they now have a parking lot where we were kind of expecting this would uh, go, like the, part, the place where it makes the most sense for them to end up. But uh, yeah, I guess we're going to have to keep our eyes out and see where they're going to end up. And Massey's does seem like the most likely option at this point um, because they do, have, they do have this area. Oops. Uh, up, sorry, one, give me one second. This area up top where you know they're starting to clear out. So at this point this could be the possible location where it ends up. But in order to do that, um, and I've said this before on Twitter when I originally put out that theory, I think they would need to increase the amount of tanks that they have here because it, as it currently stands, we don't think they have um, enough storage for, well, they're going to need additional storage for methane. Um, and as of right now, they do not have methane tanks here. So um, they may also need additional 
or to convert some of these to liquid oxygen. As far as we know, these are likely all liquid nitrogen at this point. So, um, yeah, that, that's going to be something to look out for. Is ad additional work on the actual tank farm here will kind of uh, will kind of be a, a big sign and indicator of what we what we should expect to happen here. But in my opinion, this is kind of the only place at this point that really makes sense for those to end up. Yeah, and the uh, the suborbital farm doesn't really have the space to add enough tanks to actually fill a booster because I believe the suborbital farm is not capable of actually fully filling a booster, only only a ship. So and they don't really have any room for more tanks there either. So Massey's is looking pretty promising, you know, from a logical standpoint of of where uh, booster testing could potentially take place. So I think these these stands are going to be a pretty Pretty big focus point for the next couple flyovers and see if we can see any changes with these. All the interesting things happens in Massey's, it seems. We got the, the water deluge and now we've got these. Yeah, I'm excited for that. We're gonna um be on the lookout to see what happens with these. And obviously, you know, if they are what we think they are, it's going to take a while until they're completed, which makes sense that, you know, they've started on this long before they've started on the actual groundwork for where they're gonna be located. Um, you know, the easy part probably is is the actual superstructure itself and getting the clamps ready, but the uh, more lengthy process is going to be installing all of the uh, pipe work and plumbing for the Raptor QDs and also actually installing the QDs themselves. So uh, I think it could take a few more months until these are finished. So, you know, we'll keep checking back in on these. A good um, point in chat is that they... Um... They don't need to fill, fill a booster, obviously, for testing um, for a t like a static fire. They wouldn't need a lot of methane, but they do tend to fill the LOX tank to help weigh it down, correct? Yeah, they typically fill the LOX tank completely to kind of dilute um, a uh, the mixture if there were to be a catastrophic event, as well as add some ballast um, to the vehicle itself. So they likely need at least enough uh, LOX to fully fill the booster. If they're doing, you know, large engine set testing um, at the same time, that is. Yeah, they could use uh, smaller sets of um, static fire testing as well, rather than all thirty-three. Yeah, good point. I guess it's not necessarily needed to do all thirty-three at the same time, but um, I don't know. At the same time, it, it kind of is. Like you, that's really the best way to fully test the vehicle because you you want to do actual you know when they every time they post a tweet on Twitter they say flight like testing um, so you know if you want to get the closest to flight like testing you probably want to do all of them at the same time but I guess uh, an argument against that is they did say flight like testing for the ship twenty six static fire that happened yesterday but I guess that was uh, more related to reentry testing so we'll kind of get to that a little bit later um, yeah the main you know, thing with the boosters is that they the orbital launch mount is the only test stand for boosters right now capable of supporting engine testing and at some point that is going to create a bottleneck as more boosters um, get constructed um, you know we don't know the status of um, of 10 right now but um, it's possible that it could be ready to fire engines here soon and if you know booster nine and ship twenty five are still on the mount, that's going to hold up the testing you know campaign for for booster ten. So they really need at least one other stand capable of doing engine testing, um, because ideally you'd want you know both vehicles tested separately completely, put them on the launch mount, maybe do a, a wet dress rehearsal, and then launch. You know that's the so most fluid these, way um... of going about it. Would the boost to be put on these and transported to Macy's then do a static fire, or would they be some way of putting the booster on these once they get these stands to Macy's? Probably have to have a crane at Massey's. Um, the amount of pipe work that you'd have to reconnect on these stands between, you know, transports if you were to do like what they do now with, you know, the hydraulics and everything. Um it probably would be a little bit much, in my opinion. Um, I, I feel like these would most likely be a, a stationary stand that they would uh, lift a booster onto, um, just like they do with you know some of the other test stands. And yeah. we have seen parts for a third one of those stands too, um, as far as I know. 
Yeah, I mean, you, but you mentioned that these may actually just be the pedestals right yeah, here. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. you know, I did see, I thought I saw parts for a third one, but um, I'm not sure if they're still out here. So, yeah, not 100% sure on that. But one thing to mention on this is that these are pretty wide. They're definitely wider than normal booster transport stands. So moving this back and forth up the highway uh, may not be as easy because of how wide they are. But, you know, it is a possibility that they theoretically could do that but i don't know i just don't see them ever using them for transport so um yeah i mean willing to be proven wrong on that so we'll have to keep our eyes out uh but yeah i guess we've kind of spent a lot of time on that so we'll move on a little bit uh we do have the other engine install stand nearing completion over here so they have not yet put in the actual hold down clamps here yet but um, other than that, it seems to be mostly complete, and they're doing some more work on this than we didn't see on the other one until it was actually moved into the high bay. So they're adding in some railways on the top, and they're also constructing um, some of the uh, access, uh, what do you want to call this, access platforms. So basically adding um, stairways and a platform so they can actually access the different levels of this. And uh, I'm going to show this on the in the high in the mega bay um because they've added a lot of stuff to that stand since it was moved in there which we were able to get a good view on this week with the the angles that we have on the inside of that bay but yeah they're making some progress got at least two of the doors i think there's um I can't remember if there's 10 of them in total that go on this i think there's 10 yeah there's yeah 10. so they got two of them i don't i haven't seen the other one oh, stacked more. Are, they, are they stacked over there on the left or is it just single can't, can't uh, they're stacked. They're, they could be stacked. They look stacked. Yeah, there might be a, two of them stacked on top of each other. There's two more over here as well, too. And they've started working on the, uh, the lift platform as well, too. Dance floor. So, the, you know, the, the progress on this one, I guess they're going a little bit slower, but they won't really need this until the other bay is completed unless... They want two engine install stands in the in Mega Bay One, but I doubt they would want to want to put a second one in there until the next building is operational. So maybe something to note if we look at the uh, the white platform with the stairs to the the left there, um, maybe just kind of remember that that shape and, and orientation for when we look inside the uh, the Mega Bay at the one they currently have installed because it's kind of uh, some questions uh, regarding kind of its its shape and everything. So. Cool. Yeah, I was kind of excited when I saw it in there. So we'll definitely touch on that once we get to there. Um, let's see, moving on, we also have... Uh, I'll talk about some less important things, but let me get a different image for this. Hmm, maybe this one will work. So next to the... Um, the power plant over here, and then we also have the... Um, actual oh man i'm forgetting the word that i want to use for this uh yeah this is part of the power station for the actual the full facility um like all the transformers and everything for the three-phase power that goes into the rest of the the facility all comes in here and then gets redistributed outwards but they've started building another structure down here which they're putting a lot of conduit underground for it um no real idea what this is yet, but just an interesting thing to point out that, you know, some new structure is about to go over in this area. Uh, another thing to mention, you know, I've kind of been on the lookout for the three additional Tesla um, mega packs to be brought over to this location. But as of right now, they, they haven't brought those in yet. And it finally kind of makes a little bit of sense why they haven't done that. And I'm going to kind of skip ahead a little bit over to the village area. Um, because um, since they got rid of the actual um, tracking station down here, let me get a better one. They, the tracking station's gone, and we'll see here in a second that the um, all of the solar panels have been removed as well too. And so now there maybe isn't as much of a use for these. Um, mega packs that are down here so i have a feeling that these will actually end up getting relocated over to the sanchez site here soon but that's just something i wanted to point out ahead of time and uh, i'll touch on that again once we get there but yeah we also have some other 
changes going on over near the air separation plant, or possibly what used to be the air separation plant, because as of right now, they have removed all of the um, the cold boxes from down here and all of the extra uh, equipment that they initially had down here when it looked like they were going to expand this. And a lot of the pipework that was connecting all of this stuff down here has been removed as well, too. So it really is starting to look more and more like this air separation plant is going away altogether. Which is very interesting because, you know, bringing in all the extra equipment, looking like it's going to expand it, and then, you know, now getting rid of it. I'm not really sure what to think about that. It so may um, be another... that... Go on. I was, I was just going to say, it may be that uh, SpaceX has plans for, for this area that um, it, it doesn't feel right to have that here. In, and they may actually locate that on another piece of property um, that they own, maybe, you know, somewhere nearby. Um, but yeah, it is interesting to uh, to kind of see that that structure start to uh, to move um, in a different direction. And Stephanie, were you going to say something too? I was just saying there was more just near near Cursor right now. There was also another bank of um, of um, cool, cooling devices there um, that were removed as well, as well as that ring further down where they were boiling off um, liquids. Yeah, and all the pipe work that goes to these tanks down here has been removed as well. So I have a feeling that we may see these tanks possibly move over to the launch site, at least the two larger ones, um, since they do need additional storage down there. And we know they have, oh, I can't remember, I think it was three tanks at the uh, Port of Brownsville. So that makes five if they repurpose these ones as well. So that's going to be pretty interesting to see what they end up doing with this. but. Yeah, you know, things are always changing at Starbase, and you might, my theory was that they would expand this out, but I don't know. Maybe there's not enough room to make it as large as they want it here, and so it makes more sense to move it somewhere else. But as of right now, we haven't seen them staging this equipment anywhere else, so they possibly could be just getting rid of it altogether. So, um, yeah, we're going to have to keep our eyes out on that one. What so was that left. white... What was that white tank um, that they built used for? I, I thought that had something to do with the air separation. Like maybe it was holding water. Yeah, this is what we're uh, most likely a water tank. So they have an identical one at the Roberts Road facility in Florida. Um, and yeah, as far as we know, this is probably a water storage tank. And there's two smaller ones down there as well, too. But, you know, this doesn't really make a whole lot of sense now that this facility is kind of going away. Like, well, so I don't know what to, you need water for. Up to the left there, at the water plant, just up to the left, just moved hot. Yeah, up to the left, those four tanks there were put just, yeah, there. They were put there uh, a couple of weeks ago on a pad that was poured. And this week, a lot of that equipment around the tanks were inside the tanks. They were transported inside those water tanks. And we think that's a uh, water purification system. Yeah, they. this has been a water purification system for the last year and a half, but it kind of looks like they've expanded it um, or just added additional equipment to get another layer of purification, possibly. You know, the, we don't know how many stages of purification this is, but let's say it was like a three-stage purification process. It could now be a four-stage in order to meet like certain um, requirements as far as how clean the water that they're using in their deluge system is. So, yeah, I think this possibly is just... Meeting meeting that st additional standard that they're going to be required to uh, meet for the water that they're using in that system. And um, over to the left a bit, there was at the scrapyard that scrapped a couple of items. There was a nose cone and a um, booster aft section. Is this the scrapyard down here? Yeah, just a bit more to the left, a bit more down. Ah, right here. Yeah, that's the nose cone remainder. And just down a little bit from there was where the nose cone and the booster, just to the right of your mouse now, there was an, just down now, down lower, just near that blue container. There was a, that, yeah, that was where the nose cone was and there was a booster up section there that's been dismant, disassembled. And just to the right, that strange item is, appears to have had some things removed from it over to the right of the next containers that's, we think was above your mouse now. We think was something to do with nose cone construction. 
it seems to have had a few parts removed as well. So that does seem to be the new scrapyard. Yeah, that scrapyard is always moving around. <laughs> um, Light for space these days, so <laughs> yeah. anywhere they can do it. What else do we want to mention over here at the Sanchez site? We do have um, ships that are currently still in progress of getting engine installed. So 29 is, wait, this is 28, right? That's 28, yep. yep. Yeah, so 28 still on the engine install stand. Um, and we have 29 that was moved over here. Right here, wait, yeah, this yep, is 29. 29. Yeah, yep. so 29 is now waiting for engines to be installed. So whenever 28 finishes up, they'll probably move this onto a transport stand and switch this over here. Um, but it yeah, it sounds like 29 may be getting a neighbor here in the next couple of days with uh, ship 26 possibly making um, a walk back here to either the rocket garden or maybe somewhere in the ring yard. Although I'd, I'd probably say back here uh, next to 29. Yeah, that would make sense. Um, I think that maybe covers everything at the Sanchez site, unless y'all had anything else you wanted to mention. That's about it. Oh, uh, well, Astro Joe, did we have any uh, questions about the Sanchez site or comments that were worthy of us addressing? Indeed, I uh, did want to thank 55 Chevy Guy Steve for a gifted membership, as well as Jim Cavett again, coming through with five gifted memberships. Everybody enjoy those perks. Welcome new members. Sharpie with a $10 super chat. Outstanding job, RGB team. Thank you, Sharpie. Uh, KMS um, made a statement in place of the tracking station. Now we have asphalt for new parking as observed from another channel. And a final question from F14 Jared C. Could those potential booster engine test stands go to Massey's? I think we kind of touched on that. Yeah, for sure. As of right now, that's kind of the only place that we can really see there be any room for them to go unless they end up expanding the launch site sometime soon. But uh, I think that's a lot less likely because the amount of time it would take to do that doesn't really line up with the progress that they're making on these. So Massey seems like the only site where they could theoretically get the groundwork done in time for those to be uh, ready in the near future. And that's all I got. On with the show. Cool. Yeah, testing at Macy's seems um, quite logical so they can get it all away from the launch site so they don't hold up launch site proceedings. Yeah, I agree with that. Well, let's talk about the Mega Bay. So <laughs> for weeks now, everybody's been asking when they're going to finally get the bridge cranes installed. And um, they do now finally have the both bridge cranes installed. So they were originally waiting on the two... Um, trolleys to arrive so you can see one of them right here and i think the other one is over on this side right now but yeah both bridge cranes have been installed and as of now uh, with both of those installed they've finally been able to start putting down the floor beams um in this middle area which they were holding off on that until they got the the cranes installed so you know that was one of the things that was holding up construction or the remaining construction inside of the um, mega bay but now they're well underway with finishing off the rest of it so one of the big things that they're going to need to do before they can fully finish this upper floor is to install all of the um i guess we're calling them the elevator shaft even though it's I don't know, not like a real shaft but right here and down in this corner you can see the um the pieces for those elevator shafts which still need to be installed um the uh here let me show this from another angle i think well, the, they've started to install them really okay yeah i must have missed that i guess they're they're probably lifting those in as of right now and you know i, I did say that they're currently not like an actual shaft but it, they very easily just put paneling up on the side of them to make it a real shaft um you know i've have given some thought as to why they even need those because as far as we know they're not they don't have them inside of Mega Bay 1. Um, I don't know. I think it may possibly be like additional protection, like in case somehow you, I don't know, run the booster into the too far into the back corner and it like contacts the actual um, the uh, 
elevator shaft, so I don't know. I'm, I'm, I can't think of any other reason why you would need that. But um, just an interesting thing to note that their final thing that they're going to need in order to finish off this roof. But um, one other interesting thing to point out is that they've got a uh, pipe going down here. So this is a pipe that goes up to the roof. It's not quite all the way up to the top at this point, but essentially this is um, for pouring concrete onto these um, the floors up here. So they've got the um, corrugated sheets down here, which um, will need concrete on top of them in order to, to finish them off. So they've started to run that up there. I'm, I'm sure it's probably completed by now, but yeah, that'll be one thing to look out for in a future flyover is for that actual floor to be completed, but I think they may wait until the middle section is done before they actually start pouring that. So we'll have to uh, see in a future flyover when they actually finish it. But um, right now they've also started putting the roof panels on as well too. So hopefully we'll be able to see when that floor is completed before they actually finish paneling up the actual, um, the roof section. But yeah, you know, they're moving super fast getting this done. And, uh, you know, at the same time, slowly moving or getting rid of the rest of the scaffolding around Mega Bay 1. So, um, you know, just a little bit left and most of it's all in the front up here. So, you know, I would say in the next few weeks, the, this building, uh, and I'm using air quotes, will finally be completed because they still, as far as we know, have not done anything on the actual top floor level. And, um, you know, I, I think that could just be a low priority. Like they don't may not know what they're going to put up there yet or just don't have a reason to actually finish it off yet. Um, and there could be other things that they're waiting on as well as far as, like, I don't know, HVAC or something like that. Like, you don't want to finish building this out without having an HVAC system installed yet. So um could be something that they're waiting on to actually finish that up. But on the note of HVAC, uh, somebody pointed out to me earlier this week that a lot of conduit has been um or i don't know i, I don't want to call it conduit but um uh essentially all of this piping right here which is for the hvac system has kind of been seen being moved around the build site so we're assuming that they've started to get rid of this temporary hvac system which is a sign that there's a larger hvac system that may be um installed at this point i think there i know there was a large air handling unit two of them that were delivered um like longer than six months ago at this point so there's a possibility that they could have those installed in here i've seen cranes um working in the back side of this building over the last week or so so there's a possibility that they installed that hvac system but we weren't able to actually see that um but yeah let's touch on some other interesting things in the mega bay I'm going to find a good image that shows the inside of it. So they've got some, some lines painted down on the me Mega Bay floor now. On the inside? Yeah, on the inside, yeah, to mark off the sections. The, the last photo. Yeah, the workstation too. You can see them there. You can also see that weird shaped platform there. Yeah, Ryan, you wanted to mention something about the uh, shape of this? Yeah, it was interesting that the one um, at Sanchez appeared to have kind of two curved sides to it. And I can't quite tell um, if kind of up to your to the right of your mouse, um, if that edge of that platform is, is curved as well, um, kind of the, in the same way that the one at Sanchez is. But it, it kind of seemed like they were um, intending on maybe putting two curved structures uh, next to each other. And these stands would um, possibly... Uh, I shouldn't really call them a stand. Uh, these platforms would have kind of dual access to uh, to two structures. Um, so I'm I'm kind of uh, tempted to maybe think that they might have another structure kind of next to this one, um, which would be kind of in the the middle back of the uh, the mega bay. Um, so maybe a, an interesting note to uh, maybe keep a, an eye out for for something um, sitting back there eventually. Yeah. Yeah, I never, I didn't notice this before this flyover, but it's interesting to see that platform back there. Um, just further gets rid of the need to have any of the aerial work platforms in there. So nice thing to see. I mean, they're innovating in the way that they do all of their uh, construction and final outfitting of these vehicles. So 
um, cool to see the way that all of that stuff is evolving in here. On, also in the front, uh, or the other corner, I've noticed that they've got a new... Um, this kind of looks like a more permanent like scaffolding setup around this workstation. So this is booster... Um, shoot. Is that 12? 13? 13? Booster 13. The locks uh, section for 13, I think, maybe? Yeah. yeah. And so they've got a little uh, multi-level scaffolding section set up down here, um, which I haven't seen in previous weeks, but that's interesting. <laughs> That's actually a question in chat. Sorry, Joe. The, what's that new stand in the front right? It seems to be some kind of permanent scaffolding, like we're just saying. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. You know, I guess it could be permanent because with this only being the um, lock section of the tank, they could lift up and into it um, instead of having to constantly disassemble and reassemble this around around the booster. So. Yeah, you know, it may, it may be an actual permanent workstation for locks tank sections. Um, and, you know, we've still been waiting to see the actual doorway that they're going to install here, but we haven't seen any additional work on this as of right now, so I think they may just be waiting for the actual door itself to show up, which, uh, I don't know, they can take their time on that. <laughs> yeah, the longer the better on that one. <laughs> yeah, not excited for it. What else do we have at the ring yard? Um, I'm going to switch to a different view here. I don't have any see. actual comments on the ring yard, but maybe one of y'all do. You can see a couple of sections with holes cut in them. There's a barrel section there with some holes, and there's a dome to the left with some holes in it. And we've seen, since this photo, we've seen ship 32s um forward dome and common dome put into the high bay as well right yeah so inside of the high bay we have i'm going to grab another image here um we have ship 29 in the front and 30. ship 30 in thir e wait sorry 30 in the 30 front sorry 30 in the front 31 in the back and 32 right here, uh, which is still being stacked. And I, as you, uh, you, so this is on top of the payload section in this image. And I think within the last few days, they um, already stacked the forward section, forward dome section. Yep, I believe the yep. forward and the common have both gone in there. So that uh, that ship is likely about twice as tall as it is uh, right about now. Yep. Yeah, making crazy progress on ships. I feel like they've actually slowed down a little bit, but you know, it's not like they really need to move any faster because uh, they're not launching right now. So, <laughs> yeah, great progress on the ships, though. The 30 just recently got its aft flaps installed. It's got yeah. both of them now. Yeah, I would expect that we would probably see 30 come out and um, should be ready for testing soon. Um at Massey's, and then, you know, once that's done, it'll be ready for engine install, but, you know, we'll have to wait for Ship 29 first, so there's a backlog on Starships waiting for engine install. So the ship um, the ship cryo test stand is ready and waiting over in the Rocket Garden area for it? Uh, yeah, it's tough to see from this angle. I think we can maybe see it from right here. Back there. Yeah, yeah. There so yeah. likely waiting for, waiting for Ship uh, 30 to come out and be lifted onto there. Come out and play. All right, I guess let's move on to the uh, Star Factory then. There actually hasn't been a ton of progress on in this front area. They're still working on the um, electrical conduit, which has taken longer than I, have, I expected. But they're finally putting the uh, concrete on top of it, and so they may be finished up with that groundwork. Not really sure what's going on in this area right here. Um, but I think that this building is going to be, it's not going to come straight across. I, I have a feeling it's going to be um, slanted in this direction. So that's going to be interesting to actually see how that ends up. I'm going to grab one more angle of this. This kind of shows it a little better. 
So yeah, it kind of looks to me like it's going to come down in this direction. But there's also a possibility that we'll see, you know, some sort of office space in the front of it right here, which is going to look kind of ugly. But yeah, to, to me, that's the only thing that kind of makes sense with the way that they've um, dug up the concrete down here. We kind of think this uh, section's offset to the left a little bit because of that um, pl block of land over to the far right. So just push this whole section over a little bit, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, we mentioned that, you know, given that uh, they don't have access to this little piece of land yet, instead of waiting on that, they've decided to shift the building this way. So um, interesting decision making, but, you know, <laughs> I, I was really hoping that wasn't going to happen because it kind of ruins the whole shape of the Star Factory. But, you know, it is what it is. I guess functionality is more important than actual uh, aesthetics. So, um, yeah, Absolutely. making really good progress with this side of the building. Uh, you know, I, I really like looking at that from the ground because it gives you an idea of just how large this is. So I'm going to go ahead and find a ground image really quick. Um, the um, groundwork and the um, kanji work seems to be a little bit different to other sections, but as we've noted along the way, each section is slightly different to the section before, and that would be because of the different processes, I guess. Um, sorry, I thought I had one that showed all of it in one image. This might be the best right here. But I guess when you're standing like right outside of it on the highway, you get a really a better idea of like how tall this is. But yeah, that's I guess we have the final the final shape of this building, which is n near identical to the one in um, uh, Florida, other than the actual footprint of it. But yeah, I mean, they're making really good progress on it. I would say this side of the building is um nearing completion i think at this point they've gotten some of the um siding up on this in this area right here so making really good progress on on the outside of this building and they're really rushing to get it done and it seems like they're not really as in a rush to uh get the groundwork done on the other side in this area uh, but as you mentioned stephanie yeah the underground conduit work has is different in each of these sections. So it really just kind of highlights that there's much different processes happening on each side of the, um, each area of the building. So I don't know what that kind of indicates for this side, you know, why there's so much more uh, groundwork here, but, you know, just something to, to point out. So we expect the, um, lot, the taller section to continue across the front. I guess, uh, for more nose cone fabrication. But yeah. we won't know until it goes up, I suppose. There's some concrete work there they've torn up just to the left of the current steelwork. Yeah, um, I thought that was I'm not really sure what to think about it. We saw some kind of door. Um, structures go in that concrete as far as I remember, and now they've torn it up again. They must have changed their mind again. Yeah, things are always changing out here. <laughs> and, I mean, that could be because they initially maybe weren't expecting to start this part as soon as they did. So, um, you know, change of plans or move whatever door was going to be in that area. Yep. Um, but yeah, other than that, you know, as I said, Star Factory is progressing pretty quickly. They're working on the roofing, and um, they only really have one more section to really start roofing on. So, um, you know, they're really nearing completion, kind of, with this area of the building. Uh, let's see. Anything else in the Star Factory that we should point out? Not really. They've started to put the basis for the air conditioners there on the section just above the black. On the white section, yeah. And yeah, not much else. Yeah, let's move over to the uh, village area. Actually, uh, I should double check and make sure we don't have any questions on this This before I move over. Yeah, we do. I want to also thank Pumpkin for a gifted membership um, upon arrival. And then Jim Cabot, $5 super chat. Thanks, RGV and Irma, for another great set of photos. 
Cranky old man with a $10 super chat for fuel and plane rental. We all missed you last week and glad you're back. Mauricio has the best coverage of Starbase. Agreed. Jim Cabot, uh, kind of a fun question. Are they building too fast? <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I mean, you could argue that the expansion in it, itself is maybe going too fast as far as like what they have the actual capability to output. Um, you know, I, I feel like the, with just having those, the three tents here that they were moving pretty quick as far as constantly stacking boosters and ships. And now um, pretty soon they'll be doubling their output rate of, of tank sections, if not tripling it. So um, yeah, I don't know with their current ability to launch. It does seem like they're going too fast, but you know, they obviously have plans that we're not uh, privy to. So yeah, I don't know. It's tough to say that they're going too fast in that regard. For sure. Uh, Huffy asks, uh, do you think they still plan to install windows on the star factory like in the renders? Uh, that is a good question. And I'm not really sure, but I think we're going to find out really soon. You know, if they keep going with this paneling on the side, then that'll tell us, um, pretty quickly. I mean, right now, let's see if I can get a side profile view of it. The, um, the steel they're putting on the sides seems a little bit different to the steel they're putting on on this side we're looking at now where they're putting siding on you can see the horizontal steel they're putting in around on the front side it seems a little bit different so maybe that's an indicator yeah it is a good possibility that these are the beginnings of like frames for actual window panels which would be nice I'm, i do hope it ends up looking like it did in the render because the Star Factory at um, Roberts Road, I don't believe, has windows up on the siding. So, um, you know, I don't know if it's just different, like, a, you know, designed different here because you actually uh, have a highway facing building where, you know, it's actually worth being able to see inside of it. Whereas at the Roberts Road facility, you know, there's not really any um, civilian traffic down there that could actually be able to see into the building. So it's not really worth putting windows up there. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm hoping that we end up seeing it look like it did in the renders in that regard. Then there's that weird panel on the far right there in that shot. That's the same with the, on the very right of that. Yeah, there, there, there's that weird little door thing there. Yeah, not sure what that's about. Neither do I. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but speaking of er Erna, did we, is she uh, in the chat with us right now? She is. Myrna, Irma, if, <laughs> Irma, if you want to unmute, that would be great. Let's see if we can uh, get her in here and give an introduction. Seems she's still muted, but if, if I see that change, then I will stop. <laughs> um. But in the meantime, I will keep moving over to the uh, to the village area. Uh, okay, I need to start on a different image. So, as always, um, SpaceX has made a lot of progress with housing. So they're they're making some good progress with actually starting the foundations of some of the new houses that are going to be in the back over here. Um, and they've actually finished up a few of them as well too. I don't know if I have a good shot showing that. Uh, actually, it was just these these two buildings back here. But they've also started to add new housing down in this area. So if y'all remember a few weeks ago, this, um, this tent was actually located down in this corner. And so we were kind of wondering why they moved it after they had just installed it. Now it kind of makes sense. They've um, expanded the, uh, I almost want to call them like model houses, but they're more like tiny homes that are down in this area. So they've uh, got even a, got additional space to add those in. And it seems that they're still, uh, they were in the process of spotting these two um, into their locations. But yeah, just additional housing. I don't, I don't think there's anything overly special about that. But um, one thing I did want to mention that we've kind of noticed over the last few weeks, as far as the purpose of this building, uh, I guess it was, kind of obvious but now we have a little more confirmation that 
you know, this is not a, um, a, a, uh, just like with food court, essentially, we thought it might be down here. But, you know, we've seen piping staged outside of this building for the um, tank farm expansion. And over the last week or so, uh, we've seen additional pipes that have been moved from this building on SPMTs and going into the high bay, like all the raceways for the ships and boosters. So it seems like this building is actually their um, pipe or plumbing fabrication building right here so they used to have one um i'm gonna grab another image so the pipe fabrication building used to be okay back in this corner over here um but obviously with the star factory they've had to to move that so we think that this is the new pipe fabrication building and uh you know i guess initially i thought it might happen inside of the star factory but um you know, it is it is possibly that it could still be inside the Star Factory once it's completed, but obviously they still have a need for that stuff, like, right now, until before the building's completed, so this could be temporary and then possibly moved into this building, or it may just be where they permanently do all of that work. Just while I got that shot up, Zach, someone in chat asked whether uh, you could have a look at the building, the roofing material. And also that some bridge cranes have arrived for that star factory as well. Yeah, we have uh, seen some uh, some of the, I think there are 20, either 20 or 30 20. ton bridge cranes. Yeah, I think there were 20. Yeah. So we don't know if they've actually been installed yet. I was looking at some of the ground images earlier uh, to see if we could see inside of there. So let me check. Um, Oops, that's a little bit further than where I wanted to go. Let me see if I can get a little side profile view to see if they've actually installed those yet. And just looking at it from this direction, I wasn't able to actually see them up there yet. Oh. Well, a lot of the rummies aren't there yet either, really, for the bridge cranes. True. Yeah, but what one thing I just noticed, it looks like they have some plastic up um, for the first section of the building, so uh, that kind of allows them to start using that section of the building while the remaining sections are still waiting to be completed, so kind of help them uh, keep that side of the building cool, I'm guessing. Doesn't help us look in there to see what they're doing, though, does it? <laughs> no, definitely not, but I, I would say it's a sign that they're... I mean, we've kind of already, we've already seen um, ring sections back in that side of the building, so this is just another sign that they're actually... Uh, that it's active and they're they're starting to use that side of the building. Sorry to um, take you off track again there. No, it's all good. It's actually perfect timing. Irma's able to unmute whenever you're ready. Hello. Hello. Hi. Thanks for joining us. Hi. Yes. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's nice to uh, nice to meet you. We've. Uh, I've, I, well, I haven't had a chance to talk to you yet, but yeah, really excited um, going through all these images that you've taken, and it's kind of awesome how quickly you've adjusted or gotten used to, uh, you know, filling in the spot for, for Mauricio, and yeah, uh, really excited to have you on the team. Yeah, of course. Um, I don't know uh, if you guys had any questions about... I, I know in, in the start, she had... Um, she mentioned that uh, maybe I could like talk about or like answer some questions or anything, or if it was just like introduction or what. Yeah, definitely. I guess, uh, you know, maybe some people in the chat would like to know a little bit more about your background. I have a question. Have you ever flown before? Or is this the first time? Yeah, this was my first time. Well, um like well actually no i did help out mauricio before a couple years back but it wasn't hands-on it was just more like passing him the equipment like things like that but it wasn't how i do it now and now what's happening for you sorry zach i was just gonna say how is it actually being up there i know when i went up there with him is kind of difficult when you're trying to take pictures because it's like super cold when you're putting your hands out the window with the camera <laughs> Yeah, actually, um, I have really, really skinny fingers, so my hands get really cold. Like, I'm, I tend to get really cold really fast, 
But actually, I know, um, I guess because they go numb, so I don't really feel it. So, but afterwards, you do feel it. <laughs> yeah, I know how that goes. <laughs> Best answer all day. That's awesome. So will you be, uh, you'll be doing all of the photos from here on, right? Um, whenever I have the chance or like when Mauricio needs help, um, cause I am taking school and I do work, so I do have my own little things, but every now and then I'll, I'll help him out. That's awesome. Are you enjoying it? Does it seem cool to you so far? I know you're, you're new to all the Starship stuff. Um, actually I do think it's really cool. I know at first when I first started doing it, I was really, I actually had a dream the night before that I got to the, to like, to do the flyover super late. And it was just like this whole thing. I was just like super nervous. But, um, other than that, no, like, I think I just got used to it now, but no, I, I enjoy it now. That's good. Is it nerve wracking to be in that plane? Like, do you get uh, I would, nervous? I, sorry. Um, I don't think anymore uh, just because uh, I am kind of used to it now. And um, I really love heights. That's the thing. I love heights. So I think it's a plus for me. 100%. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Well, thank you. Yeah, glad, glad you were able to hop on the stream. Um, yeah, and I, I guess we'll keep going. If you have anything you wanted to add as we go, then, then feel free and feel free to join the conversation as well. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I guess where were we? Uh, somebody mentioned that they've got a new parking lot down in this area, so they've been removing um, what was the tracking station. As you all know, the two um, tracking dishes that were in this area were completely removed, and they've also, as you all can see, have gotten rid of all of the solar panels. I think this is them right here that are stacked up. Um, so no more solar power at Starbase. Well, actually, they still have a little tiny area. Oh, actually, sorry. And at the Sanchez site, there's a bunch of solar panels up down there. But largely, they're getting rid of that. So, you know, Starbase is ever-changing. And uh, I guess this is additional parking now, from what we were told. Is it, um, Stephanie, you said it was in this area? Uh, no, it's, no uh, someone else. Joe was saying. Another channel said that there's some um, um, some asphalt there. Yeah, where your arrow is now. Okay. Yeah, I would. I guess assume that they would put even more parking down here because you know they largely do have a lot of parking on the street, which I think they're trying to uh, get rid of. So yeah, I mean it, it makes sense that they're either going to throw additional houses here or or just you know general employee parking, but. Yeah, interesting. Uh, interesting developments. I was not expecting the the um, solar farm to get removed. <laughs> yeah, that was a bit of a surprise. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Moving up into this area, we did have um, Irma captured this new landing pad that they've added over here, which we think is for the uh, for the. Um, what do you call them? <laughs> Hovercrafts. Hovercrafts. Yeah, sorry, my vocabulary is all off today. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it's weird that they would need that because they already have like a little landing area for them. But um, you know, I was wondering if this is actually for that, or if it's maybe going to be like a, I don't know, like a basketball court or something like that. I was just going to say it does look more uh, like a basketball court, especially with the uh, the logo in the middle there with the the circles on it. So. Seeing that there's a volleyball, uh, you know, court over to the right, I kind of looks like it might be more of a a basketball um, court. Yeah, there is the, a um, there is a ramp there going to the water though. At oh, that, um, so well, I'll go back to that. One thing I was going to mention, uh, where is it? Where'd it go? Down in this area, there is a soccer field. You can tell that uh, not too many people like soccer because they haven't put some nice grass down here or turf or whatever, but yeah, they've got at least got, got a soccer field down there, which was kind of what was making me think that this would end up one of the things that made me think that this might be a basketball court. But yeah, you mentioned the, the ramp down here. And this is more like um, a bit more, I don't know, like um, upscale looking for a landing pad for the 
hovercrafts rather than that kind of bit the other site they're using right now is sort of a bit more, I don't know, not quite as pretty. Yeah, it's possible. I don't know. I mean, it looks it's like the perfect size for a basketball court, though. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we'll have to wait yeah, and like see if they theory. add some hoops up there. I like that theory, too. There's a little shelter right beside, just to the right of the X there, too, getting built. Just to the, yeah. Yeah, I was almost thinking that it was going to be like a place for them to like grill or whatever, you know, uh, which, in my opinion, almost adds to the theory of being a basketball court, just a little recreation area on the side. Um, yeah. But uh, I guess moving on to more Starship stuff, I think, and I'm, I'm, I could be wrong, maybe I dreamed this, did they start removing the uh, arrow covers from the um, HLS nose cone? Yes, they did, yep. So they removed the, the arrow caps, as I call them, the kind of the separate components that sit on top of the, the forward flaps, and then the, uh, the, the covers themselves that kind of wrap around the, the flaps have also been taken off. So I believe um, it's essentially just a bare nose cone now with uh, some tiles um, still on it in, in a majority of, of places. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with the remaining tiles. It looked like they removed the tiles that were necessary in order to get the arrow covers off. Um, and they may, I guess, keep the rest of the tiles on there. Um, of course, there is a, a new bare spot now since they removed the the uh, the cover. There's uh, they originally had painted everything visible white. Um, so now you can see some, some stainless steel. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with the tiles and if they decide to, uh, I guess, paint the rest of it. Yeah, and I just realized, um, Irma, you were out there yesterday and got some images as well. So uh, I'm looking through those in the background because I had, hadn't downloaded the most recent ground images. I'm not sure if you happened to get a picture of that area yesterday. Which area are you looking for? Us. I'm sorry. I can that uh, HLS nose cone with the... Yeah. I don't see anything don't from there. So. She wasn't able to get too far in because they closed the roads on her when she was... She just arrived not too long. Before. Okay. Cool. All right. So I will stop searching through those. Um, yeah. So that's an interesting development. I mean, I guess we've been waiting for that for quite a while because, you know, obviously there's no reason to have flaps on this thing. So, um, yeah, that is going to be interesting to see. I wonder if they'll end up taking the tiles off because that's the other thing that's not really necessary to have. But um, I'm guessing that's a little bit less likely to occur. I reckon, my personally, I would guess that they'll take the tiles up because, like you say, they're not necessary. And, like, it is only a mock-up, but um, I can imagine seeing that completely white like the last mock-up. Yeah, it's very, very interesting the, uh, the path they've taken with this because they went from essentially a flight-ready nose cone with, you know, the, the internals all kind of set up, and then they started stripping out internals to allow for the outfitting of a, uh, the interior mock-up and now they are stripping off of the, you know, the details that were on the outside, like the flaps, the tiles, um, the arrow covers. And it seems difficult to uh, apply logic here because you would have thought they might have just started with a, a brand new, new clean nose cone. Because <laughs> we're kind of going opposite direction now. <laughs> but uh, I, I suppose it was a nose cone that was laying around at the time. They figured they could use it. But yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting use of resources to uh, take a, a nose cone that was kind of fully outfitted for, a, you know, a a test article ship and now, you know, delete everything you, you did to that <laughs> to make it a uh, kind of an empty nose cone again. Yeah. I was actually surprised that they didn't, I mean, you, you, with the way that they repurposed ship 27's aft section for that, um, for the uh, structural test of the um, engine shielding, I'm surprised that they didn't use the nose cone section and entirely replace this with the, uh, with ship 27's nose cone, which I think would have made a lot more sense. I guess other than the payload section, never mind. I, I take it back. Uh, with that payload section in there, it doesn't probably not the best to use for this. But that is the other thing that it's odd that you know outfitting a mock-up for it, you would think that you would also want a actual payload section on there because that's a big a big part of that HLS mock-up. So um, yeah, I would say overall this thing is very odd. All right, so moving on a little bit, did have some restructuring of the 
um, storage area for all of the um, equipment. So they, this is kind of where they park all the SPMTs and cranes and whatnot when they're not being used. And uh, it used to be like that they drive in from this side, but now they've gotten um, some uh, shipping containers up in that area and it's kind of blocked in. So now a little more of a odd looking parking lot down there, but doesn't, I don't really see a whole lot of room for SPMTs at the moment, but um, yeah, another new change to, to point out. Um, and other than that, I don't know if there's a lot that we haven't mentioned down in this area. Well, they added that car park there where the trucks are parked just to the right of the cursor, and they've extended that bit of dirt up to the top of the yeah. frame, and they're adding a bit more dirt there next to your cursor there as well. Yeah, odd area because they don't really have anything down here, so it'll be interesting to see what they end up doing with that. Well, Thomas was speculating that uh, SpaceX owns a couple of blocks of land up there, and they may be opening up even more car parking Yeah, I mean, I, I guess, you know, can never have too much parking. <laughs> um, well, I guess let's uh, go ahead and move over to the launch site. Very good. So, as we mentioned a little earlier in the show, for those who were just joining us, they have actually paved this area of the um, tank farm, which is now a pretty large parking lot. So, I mean, this really helps out with uh, what they had in the front of the uh, launch site, which was really nothing, I guess. Um, the, you know, most of the employee parking was along the side of the road. Uh, obviously, in these images, you can't really see that because this was taken on a Sunday where there weren't a lot of people on site. But yeah, I mean, I'm guessing that next time we see a fly over um, next week that we may actually see some uh, all of the employee parking moved down into this area, which is kind of nice getting it off the road. I do wonder if that means that they don't want anybody parking on the road at all, or if they just want to remove the employee parking from over there. Um, but yeah, Ryan, you were saying that you think this may be like temporary. It's one option. Um, you know, they, it seems as of late they've kind of been expanding the launch site to the the absolute maximum bounds that they can currently build on um and i'm wondering if there was a an item that came about um whether it be for you know environmental concerns or or regulation um of maybe trying to get the employees to park um on property versus kind of off the, the side of the highway so this could have been thrown together as kind of a, a temporary parking lot um, main reason why I, I guess I'd kind of look at it as being temporary is um, it's not really graded the best. Maybe the, the best place to look for this is on the top right. You can kind of see the curved wall um, and the the level of the the asphalt kind of changes as it kind of, you know, slopes downward. So the whole thing is technically sloped kind of to the top left corner. Um, so given that the tank farm is higher up, it makes sense why it's it's sloped, but there have been uh, some other images from the ground that kind of show how, how sloped it is, especially toward that, that right-hand side. So I don't know. It, um, it could be temporary. Um, you know, temporary could mean, you know, six months or two years, not really sure. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a little, little interesting that this kind of just popped up out of nowhere um, and didn't really seem to be all that necessary. So um, and given the fact that it's so close to the tank farm, it kind of seems like it was kind of shoehorned in here in a in a way. So not sure what other people think about that, and but uh, I know there's uh, a lot of things at Starbase really aren't permanent, as we've come to find out. So um, this, you know, seems like it would be a piece of cake to remove and uh, you know reprioritize somewhere else later on. Yeah, I do think it's interesting having this huge wall going around the perimeter of it. <laughs> Another thing to note is they, on the other side of Highway 4, they seem to be rebuilding a dirt berm that used to be a dune and it's making it. So in that photo, it's further towards the ocean, further towards the gulf. They're reclaiming that bit of land on the far side of Highway 4. There may not be room for parking along there in the future. Uh, let's see. I may need to pull up another image in order to show that. Um... Give me a minute, because I exited out of 
a good image that I had for it. So let me uh, see if I can find that on the side really quick. Yeah, that area across the, the street from the highway has changed quite a bit, especially when they ran the new electrical conduit through there. Um, you know, of course, they had to dig a trench for that. So it kind of uh, disturbed a lot of the, the natural, um, you know, buildup of the dunes that they, that they had there. Um, so it's possible they could be, you know, trying to uh, reconfigure how all that, uh, how that looks and maybe how people park. Yeah, I just got that image here. So let me bring that up. There we go. Yeah, so we're we're talking about this area down here, right? Yeah. And that area typically had uh, some buildup of the dunes beforehand, so it's possible they they might just be you know replacing it the way that it or similar to how it was before. Yeah, I mean it's weird because they peeled it back so far, and then you'd think it would be even better for parking now, but um, I guess not. <laughs> would make sense to um, you know you know, put some, put some dunes back down here on, Un unnatural man-made dunes. <laughs> well, it, all looks good in the eyes. it all looks good in the eyes of the um, environmental authorities. So, Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, so let's see. Oh, also, oops, sorry about that. Also at the, um, suborbital tank farm. Okay. That was weird. Uh, we do have, um, they're, they're still completing this road that actually goes back here. So, you know, I was initially thinking that this was all going to be one road and I'm, I'm not sure. It kind of looks like it may still, but, um, you know, we were initially thinking it was going to be wide for the purpose of bringing SPMTs back here, but that's clearly not the case. Um, but they are bringing some, it looks like they're doing some directional drilling to go under here or bringing in, um, the electrical from the new three-phase power from Brownsville, so that's going under the road. And uh, they never really ran any electrical over to the suborbital tank farm, so it looks like that's what they're kind of doing right now. Um, so they do still have generators down here, which is kind of how they're powering the suborbital tank farm, and uh, seems like they're trying to do away with that. But the other big thing that we've seen down here over the last week is they've removed the... Um, container wall that was down here and they've started digging a trench kind of along the um, the side of the entrance and from what we've heard um, I guess this was from Chief um, who's with the Lab Padre channel is that they allegedly are building a large wall over here so I guess maybe somewhat similar to the one that's along the um, the backside of the uh, the driveway is um he said it was going to be potentially 26 feet tall which is pretty large um so yeah i'm not not sure why the need for that um i don't know i guess it, just trying to get more of a permanent infrastructure instead of using shipping containers for your wall um you know i guess you know that's the only thing i can really think of is possibly even like storm surge protection because um, you know, in the event that you have like a hurricane come through here, it's good to have a tall wall to pretend to pre prevent um, storm surge from like going directly into the facility. Obviously, through the front gate, it's going to be a problem. But um, you know, some of the areas where you actually have sensitive equipment and whatnot, you probably want to protect it a little bit more. So, yeah, expecting they may have uh, they may have wanted to just replace a lot of the the components along that side anyway, since. Um, a lot of concrete got thrown that way. Um, one of the, it's kind of hard to tell from, from these angles, but one of the openings um, from the, the orbital launch mount kind of funnels a bunch of stuff directly in this path. So a lot of rock got, got thrown over in this direction um, and peppered some of the buildings, which um, some have since been repaired, but they, uh, they may have decided to, uh, you know, maybe those were a write off and uh, just kind of replace everything from the ground up. And, you know, wall might uh, might make some sense to, maybe contain debris um, of sorts, you know, in the future, maybe whether it be a, uh, you know, a static fire on, on pad A or pad B, maybe, you know, a, a taller wall could help contain any potential debris from flying out into the uh, the environmental land up to the right. Um, not really sure, but uh, but yeah, 26 feet uh, seems kind of excessive, but at the same time, you know, everything at, at Starbase is so big, 
um, that 26 feet is actually not really that big. So, uh, and, and it could be that some of that, that 26 feet is, is actually um, in the ground. So maybe it's, you know, six feet underground and, and 20 feet above. Um, not really sure. So we'll have to wait and see what they end up doing with this area. But yeah, it's a, it'll be interesting to see. You know, I would have to look at the trajectory of the debris, but I wonder if a 26 foot wall would have protected NASA space flights van from getting, uh, you know, impacted by that huge rock. Well, that rock came in fairly well horizontal, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe I could have been enough to stop it. <laughs> um, yeah. So I guess we may not see this being used as a parking lot anymore. Um, probably reclaim this land and, you know, make it well i mean this wasn't really part of the uh, uh, nature preserve area over here before because it was always kind of like that they just put a parking lot on top of it so yeah it'll be interesting to see what they what they do with this but i think most of this equipment instead of being outside of the launch site will be back in that parking area the new parking area so um cool let's move on to the orbital tank farm Um, so we haven't had a whole lot of changes with the orbital tank farm, but there are some things on the back side of it, which I found interesting. So I'm going to move over to this side. Um, and this is along the same lines of protecting things from debris. Uh, a lot of the, uh, let me get a better one. Maybe this one will be good. So a lot of the HVAC and stuff that was, um, that's for this building and the transformers. There was a lot of debris that came back here and damaged um, some of the equipment back here. And so not only have they, well, for one, they've upgraded the HVAC in this building. I think I mentioned that a few weeks ago. They've um, added large ducts going into this building, much larger than what was there before. So um, added additional cooling for all of the um, control systems that are inside this building. But they've also now got... Uh, I guess you can call them shields for the transformers. So uh, one thing you would not want is for debris to come flying and damage these transformers and then, you know, make it you, you lose, lose power in this facility, which would be not a good thing. Um, so interesting little additions that they have going on there. I wonder if they'll end up doing it for the actual HVAC system as well too, but yeah, maybe this is, Probably just the start of it. I think, I don't know if they had additional framework down here. Zoom out a little bit. No, I don't see any. So yeah, just an interesting development over there. But um, one more thing with the actual tank farm area. They've gotten all of the, the rest of, or most of the pipe work staged down here for um, expanding the actual um, kettle boiler system. So uh, right now, they've gotten all the pipework that they can install without breaking into um, the existing system. Uh, and they look like they're ready to do that work as soon as they get the clearance to do it, maybe after the next launch. But as of right now, we haven't seen them actually start that work. So that's an, a sign that, I don't know, the launch isn't as far away as it as we think it may be. So... Uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they've gotten a lot of that pipe work just staged up down here. They've got a huge pipe down here, which is part of that system as well. Not really sure where that goes, but um, yeah, they're ready to do that work once it's once they get uh, clearance to do it. And I say get clearance, I mean clearance from their like project team that they can start that stuff, because I'm sure the actual um, install team is ready to do it right now. Uh, but on the other side of the actual tank farm uh, we're still waiting on them to bring in the new cryo tanks um, but they are preparing for installing all that pipe work as well too we have um, some two-sided pipe racks that they've got down here which are they're preparing to install so um, yeah it looks like they'll be placing all of that here soon I don't know if they'll do that before the launch or Again, if that'll be something that happens afterwards, but um, yeah, I mean, they're ready to make this change really quickly once the, um, after the, after IFT2, and the only big thing that we'll need to see is all of those tanks arrive to this area, so. 
that'll be exciting to watch out for once the um, after the launch happens. So there's a little bit of plumbing staged um, at the top of the photo for the methane kettle boilers too. There's the trailer just above it. Keep going up higher. Right there. Um, up to, where is it? Uh, to your left. Yeah, yeah, to the left. Yeah, to your left. Yeah, just there. There's some more pipe staged for the uh, methane side. Yeah, I'm surprised they even brought all this out. You know, like, I guess the you do run a small risk of it getting damaged if there's a bunch of debris thrown during the next launch, which I don't think will happen, but, you know, um, interesting to bring all of this out because a lot of, most of the equipment down here, they end up um, moving it away from the launch site during the actual launch attempt because even if there is no debris um, thrown anywhere here, you still have the possibility of a large... Um, you know, steam tornado moving through this area and throwing stuff around. So I'm kind of surprised that they um, ended up bringing all this down here. Of course, there's always a possibility that, uh, you know, if there's going to be um, a longer waiting period after the, the wet dress rehearsal, they could, you know, splice into the pipes. But I guess thinking of all of the things that could go wrong with doing that, I would hope that they don't. Um, but yeah, it, it begs the, the question of, you know, why is uh, piping being staged now if that would involve, you know, cutting into uh, the pipes that you would be testing already? Yeah, I agree with that. So we saw a little bit of um, work on the deluge farm, the high pressure pipes, the high pressure work um, on the high pressure tanks on the far left there. From the front, they've put some kind of um, um, some ca some sheathing around the high pressure pipes. It looks like to mitigate um, if a pipe fails to stop a pipe flying away. That's you can see it from a ground shot of last week. Yeah, let me that, uh, bring up some ground shots here. Other than that, the deluge farm has been fairly stagnant as well. I do not know if I have an image of that. I don't think I do. Yeah, I don't. If maybe you could possibly throw it into live live comms or something like that, or send it to me. Yep, one minute. Yeah, I don't have that. I did remove a bunch of images though, because there was like four hundred and uh, sixty of them. <laughs> um, maybe I could see it from the front though, possibly. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm kind of surprised that they haven't installed this last remaining um, these pipe or high pressure tanks right here. But I guess that's maybe something that they won't need to do until after the first launch. Um, but yeah, I mean, things are largely completed. I think the one other thing that I wanted to mention, which we talked about at the beginning of the show, um, was that they added in the new. Um, uh, uh, I want to call them RCS events, but just general events that are on the top of the booster up here. And so we were wondering what they were doing with um, Booster 9 when they had the hot stage ring removed. And um, we did see that they did something with the, um, the motors for the grid fins. Uh, I think one of them was taken off, like they had to replace it. But now we know that this is also something that was added on uh, while they were while they had that hot stage ring removed. So they added these vents onto the top of the booster, which is very interesting that they're still making changes like this um, this close to, or I guess say this close. We have no idea when the launch is going to happen, but this late in the game, still making changes to booster nine. So at this point, they've done it on booster nine and ten, and assuming this will also be done on all of the uh, future boosters as well too. But now we have some answers as to what, what was happening with the uh, booster with the hot stage ring removed. Really surprised they were willing to cut into this, um, you know, with all the debris that could end up on the inside as a result of doing that. But definitely an interesting change there. And sorry, did you already send that image over? It's on its way up. Cool. Good old Aussie internet. <laughs> there it is. 
I'm not seeing it. Let's see. It's in um, Studios chat. Hmm. Well, I haven't seen it appear yet. Maybe you could send it as a DM instead. Sorry about that, everybody. Still coordinating some stuff over here, trying to get that image up there for you. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, we have seen the hot stage ring obviously placed back on top of Booster 9. And then earlier in the week, they so they stacked Ship 25. Uh, and they had some issues with possibly the electrical system and maybe also with the um, the QD port on the front of the ship. And so they lowered Ship 25 again. And then um, two days ago... I think it was two days ago, they restacked 25. So uh, we are expecting to finally see a wet dress rehearsal soon. Um, I think there's, Ryan, is there a closure this week? And, oh, yeah. sorry, is it tomorrow? Yes, we, we should have a closure um, for tomorrow, um, which uh, it's kind of an interesting closure because it doesn't seem to have um, an actual like posting in the table um, on the, the Cameron County website. Um, but uh, we have a couple of uh, posts on uh, Twitter or X uh, from the sheriff that document it, um, and it, it uses some, some different language that um, implies it would be a, a rather significant test. So um, I think a, a lot of us are believing that it is um, you know, essentially signaling a, a wet dress rehearsal. Um, so we, we have uh, something to look out for um, hopefully happening tomorrow. Yeah, that that's kind of interesting that they're going to do that on a Sunday. Um, yeah, using a Sunday closure, I mean, they those come with a cost, um, so it's uh, it's unlikely to to be something small. Um, and yeah, that the fact that it, it would be on a, a Sunday versus just waiting for the following Monday is uh, it's rather rather interesting. Um, it seems a little bit uh, accelerated, I guess, uh, in that sense. So. Maybe there's uh, some data that uh, the the FAA you know is requesting, or or other people are requesting. You know, just a, a thought. Maybe they're trying to expedite that that process. But uh, but yeah, it, it's it's interesting that they would do it on a Sunday and not uh, you know wait for the, the following Monday. Yeah, I agree with that. And we got that image up here. And so Stephanie, what were you pointing out about this? So I hope the resolutions and I hope you're zooming to the red. Sort of red things uh, on the say the center bank. You can see a piece of cable wrapped around the white pipe, the vertical white pipe, and they're attached to a mesh that goes around the steel high pressure pipe. It looks like to contain a pipe if a pipe should break. Indeed, yeah, it does kind of look like a like a netting that's maybe attached to the physical tank and then to the connections. So if one of those, um, you know, pipes were to burst, uh, it would essentially flail around inside that netting and not actually hit anything, um, and you know, potentially cause damage. Yeah, that makes me think that they've actually had that happen. I think the other, um, the original set of high pressure gas cylinders uses hard lines to connect to the kind of the, the manifolds themselves. Um, it looks like with this design, they're using more of a, it looks like it'd be a flexible tubing, which might be the, the difference. Maybe the, the, the flexible hose can't take as much pressure um, as the, the hard line, most likely. So it might be just a precautionary thing. Yeah. Interesting. Um, so one last thing that I did want to point out before we leave today is that uh, they did perform not only a static fire of um, Ship 26, but they also did something that we haven't seen in a very long time, which was a pre-burner test. And I actually don't have that ready here. So let me uh, go to my own Twitter page and see if I can pull that up really quick. Um, so yeah, this is from Vlad Padre. This is the uh, pre-burner test of Ship 26. And as I said in this tweet, I think it was 705 days since the last time they did this, which was on Ship 20. Um, and there's some interesting things to point out about this. I, I think um, one of the things that we noticed was the fact that this seemed a lot more contained. Like, 
in comparison to some of the previous preburner tests where the flame came all the way up, up halfway up the ship, um, it seemed to stay below the test stand. So this could be um, something to do with the new purge system that they have installed on the test stand, which is most likely similar to the one that they have on the uh, launch mount, the orbital launch mount, uh, other than the fact that it doesn't use water. So it's mostly like a nitrogen purge system, which kind of forces all of the um, uh, oxygen out of the area. So that probably helps to uh, contain some of the actual um, flames that are happening down here. But the other, I guess, thing to just point out, <laughs> excuse me, point out is just why even do a pre-burner test in the first place. And uh, Ryan, I know you had some thoughts on that. Yeah, so it's maybe maybe to, to state the obvious, everything about um, Ship 26 is different and weird. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily expect everything to kind of go the, the same flow as you know some of the, the previous ships. Um, it's completely skipping a um, spin prime um, it seem I believe that would be a first for I guess any vehicles at at Starbase, um, and skipping right to a, a pre burner um, potentially has some benefits. Um, well, hold a... on, hold on. Technically, they never did spin primes until after Ship Twenty, right? So they never did it on Ship Twenty or anything before that. I believe they had on some of the other the older ships. Um, with the uh, with Raptor one and one point five, I believe they still did some spend primes. So, um, the the transition to I guess starting with a, a pre burner um, could indicate a a change in kind of the the testing campaigns for for vehicles. Um, it's still way too early. We have one data point to go off of, so it's still way too early to say this is for sure. But um, a pre burner um, could give you more information than a, a spend prime alone could. Um, not only are you exercising the, the turbo machinery, but um, you're also having um, some ignition take place, just not sustained high thrust ignition. It's kind of just a, a fireball um, as it hits the ground. And with Raptor 2, it's a little bit different because of how they actually ignite the main chamber, not not having actually any, any torch igniters. So there's some other you know interesting things they could be um, playing with with there, um, but yeah, seeing this pre burner, it was interesting. Um, and then, I guess maybe to to, to follow that, the uh, the static fire of a single engine, um, quite rapidly, um, is uh is pretty interesting. Uh, it indicates that the the pre burner was uh, successful, um, and uh, it was a single engine pre burner and a a single engine static fire and. Now they are are transitioning to uh, move twenty six back to the the build site possibly. So sounds like whatever um, they were wanting to test with twenty six, it wasn't super high priority because they kind of put off testing for for a little while. Um, but they they got the information that they they wanted, um, and they're likely moving it to a, a safe spot for uh, uh, IFT two coming up here. So um, I guess a some points. Interesting things to note is that. As you mentioned, they seemed like they're about to take Ship 26 off of the uh, suborbital test stand. So I, I thought that was interesting because they didn't do a six-engine test. Um, but one of the things that they mentioned on this tweet was that this was demonstrating a startup for a deorbit burn, um, which is interesting because uh, we're not expecting any deorbits, any deorbit burn to be necessary with um, Ship. 25 because it won't actually reach orbit so there will be no reason to actually do a deorbit burn in the first place but ship 26 flight profile could be a little bit different if they are expecting to reach orbit um they'll actually have to do a perform a deorbit burn in order to bring it back in so obviously with a ship like this you're not going to be um doing the whole uh, you know gliding back in um, since it doesn't have any flaps or anything like that, but obviously you don't want to just leave it up in orbit, um, especially since it doesn't have any solar panels or anything like that on it, so you'll probably lose communication with it after a while um, once, it, once the batteries run out, so they will have to actually deorbit it safely. Um, so I guess this is that, that test of the um, deorbit burn for that reason. 
Yeah, a lot of the the ships that we've sold, the, the flight plan for ship 24 and ship 25, and presumably the next ship um, is all going to be um, a ballistic trajectory that will intercept with the the atmosphere, um, just you know as a precautionary measure if you know if the ship does indeed. Um, you know, become unresponsive or uncontrollable, that it will, you know, re-enter in a, a predicted location. Um, this doesn't necessarily mean that Ship 26 is going to fly or not going to fly. I know there's a lot of people who have kind of, you know, speculated about about that. Um, it could go either way. Um, it could also simply be something um, for, for NASA related to, you know, HLS that maybe NASA wanted them to, to prove that they can, you know, start an engine um, you know, after a, a coast, a simulated coast period of the the ship being, you know, in space. So um, that there was some funky business with a lot of the venting going on with uh, Ship 26 that um, could have something to do with um, trying to simulate tank conditions after a after a longer, um, you know, coast period, you know, lower pressures or temperatures or, or something. Um, so a lot of a lot of weird things that kind of have gone on with with 26, but um, but presumably any ship that um, is intended to deploy any meaningful um, payload is likely going to have to do this this deorbit burn. So we're probably a couple ships out from it actually requiring that step. So it is a little interesting to, to see uh, that you know specific test done right now. Um, I don't really anticipate you know even twenty eight um, possibly needing to do that, um, but uh, but we'll see. Um, it's it's going to be interesting to see if 26 is next in line after uh, 25, or if they will skip to to 28, and maybe 26 is just going to be a, a garden ornament for for now. You could see the um, header tank on ship 26 had frosted over, so they possibly used the header tank. And interestingly enough, there was no water deluge either during that static fire. That is correct. Yep. Yeah. Ring Watchers logo up there. Yeah. Um, so the, yeah, was, the, um, this test could have... Um, oh, sorry, I lost my chain of thought. Go on, Zach. Well, I was just going to say that, yeah, I, I didn't notice before that they didn't have the water deluge, but um, yeah, pretty interesting that they didn't use it. I'm guessing with just a single engine may not be actually necessary. So, Yeah, my thought was, I think, um, just reflecting what Ryan said, that the... Um, this could have been tested with uh, warmer fluids rather than the um, the um, sub-chilled fluids that they use on takeoff. So just to swap up the pressures and temperatures a little bit. Yeah, it would be interesting to get more data on that, uh, more information on from SpaceX about you know what's actually different with this test. But uh, I believe Elon has said in the past that uh, you know starting up with different tank conditions has been a something that they have been testing at McGregor. Um, so it's possible that uh, this is the the first test of that actually happening um, at Starbase with an engine integrated on a vehicle, uh, which would be probably the, the, you know, the aftermath of a couple months testing at McGregor uh, just to get some data. Yeah. And um, a D-Albert burn would need to be one of the center engines, I guess, for the th uh, to give you thrust vector control because you would need... Um, You'd need to control the um, the orbit burn uh, fairly accurately. Yeah. Even point. though the vacuum engines are more efficient in space, obviously. Very true. Um, well, I want to make sure that we answer some questions because we have reached the end of our uh, our time here. So, um, Astro Joe, did we have any questions from the audience? Yeah, we got a lot of support for Irma, too, as well. Jim Cavett, uh, $5 Super Chat. You rock, Irma. James Wilson wants to uh, keep Irma warm for uh, flying, so $10 Super Chat for some warm gloves for Irma. Yazada, $5 Super Chat as well, gloves for gloves fund. Steve Coates, $1.99 Super Chat, warm hands for Irma. Er, Ulrich Mueller, a 10 euro Super Chat a, for a warm cap for Irma. And uh, touching on some questions, Huffy asking, what are the white boxes on the methane tanks? Um, well, whew, that'd be tough to know which methane tanks we're talking about here. There's lots of them. Great. 
Um, it the occurred larger, the question yeah, those yeah right around mm -hmm. uh, right around the orbital uh, tank farm. Um, they added those a couple weeks back. I'm not sure if we know exactly what those are. If there's some sort of like uh, cover for like the the vent in the you know the the outer shell. Um, not not totally sure. Yeah, they seem Close to be wrapped up still. That was well spotted. Yeah, hopefully we'll see them uncovered and we'll be able to get a better look at them here soon in the next few weeks. I want to thank 55 Chevy Guys to you for another $10 super chat. Thanks for the great pick, Serma. Um, additional questions regarding the GSC tank shell from Crane Man. That tank shell looks horrible. Will all those tanks be replaced with the horizontal tanks? Okay. What about the water tanks? Uh, yeah, that's one thing I guess we forgot to mention. Um, they have installed some additional bracing on the uh, GSE tanks, or the one that was damaged, so yeah, I mean, that looks amazing. Uh, amazing work there. <laughs> Basically, make, make sure it's going to be stable, um, you know, with the dents that were on there. I'm guessing they did some additional work to try and pull out the dents, um, and so this is just, you know, stitches that they've installed on there to uh, make sure... That is so... That is so shonky. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I hope this thing goes away, but we'll we'll see after the next launch um, what the fate of the vertical tanks at the orbital tank farm is. But um, yeah, that screams temporary to me. Definitely. A hey, cookie asked, does Ship Twenty Six even have lift points for stacking on a booster? Yes. Yeah, 26 has all the same hardware. It just lacks the tiles and the uh, the fins. Um, you can actually see a lot of the hardware a lot more clearly on 26 compared to the other ships because it doesn't have that additional hardware. So yeah, there's the lower um, point right there that would be um, used for the, the stabilizers um, on, the, on the chopsticks. And then the actual socket itself is up higher. Um, on the on the ship, isn't it this one right here? Uh, that would be the lower point, and then the socket that the chopsticks actually interface in, I believe, is the dark spot that's up higher um, on the nose cone. Mm -hmm. If you go up, there's a dark spot, basically like straight. Keep going up a little bit, a little bit more. Yeah, right, right in there. Yep. No way, it's that high, Ryan. Wait, is it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right, because it's below the forward flaps. Yeah, you're right. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I was like, hold on. Without without the flaps on here, it looks uh, completely different. So yeah, you're right. It's about that high up. <laughs> Don't worry, I was thinking the same thing, but then I figured, no, it's definitely above the um, payload section. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, it definitely looks weird without flaps. It kind of throws, uh, throws you off. <laughs> yeah. Um, one thing I want to mention, if you guys haven't already, to do us a favor and hit that like button. Um, I actually forgot to mention that this entire show. So uh, yeah, if you guys are still here with us, make sure you do that before you before you leave. Um, and sorry, Astro Joe, do we have any last remaining questions as well? Yeah, due to uh, you know time time constraints here, we'll touch on one more from Spock X. Uh, is that a form to the left of the road around the berm? A concrete form, I suppose. Uh. So to the left of the berm. Give me one second. I'm going to grab a better image. Um, is he talking about this right here? Can you repeat the question? Is that a form to the left of the road around the berm? Spock X in chat saying go left. Uh, I'm guessing over over here. To the left Maybe of the I'm berm, not. he said. Well, I don't see any form work over there. So then the answer is probably no. Next yeah. to pad B. Let's say the road would, yeah, if we go over to pad oh, B. Okay. Pad B. Um, Maybe right there next to that. I think that's just construction fence. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, I think they're right. waiting to um, 
install or uh, lay down the rest of the road right here to connect this. Cool. Well, I guess that will uh, kind of end the show for us here today. I want to thank all of you for joining us on this Saturday. Hopefully you all enjoy the rest of your uh, weekend as well. And uh, thanks, Irma, for, for helping us out with all of the flyover pictures and the ground images, doing uh, really amazing work out there. So thank you, even though it's only your first, first few times up there. So, you know, can't even really tell the difference. So appreciate all the hard work. Um, and I want to also thank our other co-hosts for being here. So I'll let you guys uh, say your goodbyes after uh, I sign off as well. So I will see you all. Well, uh, I won't be here next week, but I'll be here uh, man, two, two weeks from now. So um, I think Stephanie will probably be on the show next week as well. So um, everybody, thanks, Stephanie, for picking up that slack uh, while I'm not here. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all next week and pass it off. Or not next week, but, you know. <laughs> well, I'll say goodbye. And, um, yeah, thanks, Zach. It's good to have you back in the chat. It's so much easier with you on board. Um, I'm no Zach when I do the show, but um, we do get the um, the updates done and the changes uh, shown, and we do fill in the time. So, yeah, it's goodbye. And uh, hit the like, and we'll see you next week. Yep, thanks for having me again, guys. Uh, it's always fun to to get on here and kind of speculate and go over some of the uh, the changes from from week to week. So, um, you know, as with most weeks, we'll be excited to see the next one, and uh, hopefully, we can you know start to piece together some of the the mysteries that are still kind of looming around the uh, the different sites. So, yeah. And boy, are we glad to have you, Ryan. Yeah, thanks for thanks for joining us, Ryan, Zach, Stephanie. Andy, thanks for a great job producing here today. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Main engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. Love you. Bye. Perfect.